Hey guys, happy happy uh, holidays here. Merry Christmas to you all. It's Tire Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone is doing well and having a good holiday to start out with. So apologies to anyone that might have been looking for a video yesterday. That was my full intention to do that with some family matters that came up. You know how it is during the holidays sometimes. But everything's good. Everything's taken care of. So now we're back to business here. Hope everyone again is enjoying the holiday. We're just going to be doing mainly a January outlook. Weather right now, as far as everything is concerned, is uh, pretty calm for the most part. It's going to be a little bit after Christmas where things get kind of interesting. We'll probably make a video on Christmas Day, like towards the evening. But beyond that, nothing really to talk about right now, but January lies ahead too. So we'll go ahead and get into that. So as I'm doing this, of course, make sure you're hitting that like button. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. And then if and then if you wouldn't mind, also hit that share button. With that being said, some interesting things to make note of here. And there's a lot to unpack with this too. Because there's a couple of the variables that are coming into play here. So for one, of course, as we've already been knowing, especially if you've been following the channel for a little bit, we're in the middle of an El Nino, one that has been at times very strong. And this is a typical calling card where you see those chances for above average temperatures further to the north and equal to maybe even some below average temperature chances existent across the lower half of the US to the south. But one thing to make note of here, and I'm gonna make further reference to this later here, I'm just more or less kind of throwing a little Easter egg to any of my weather nerds that happen to be watching here. The entire state of Alaska is above average, temp has above average temperature probability here. About 40, 50%, but something to make note of here. You probably know what I'm talking about if, by chance, you know what stratospheric heating is. It's a big hint I just gave there. But that being said, we also have uh, another typical El Nino signal where we have increased precipitation across the southeast, not uncommon, and then towards the southwest, there's a chance for precip, and then, of course, towards the Sierras, especially towards the valleys even as well. On the western side of the Sierras, we could see an increased amount of precipitation. The thing I find interesting here, but also could be a little bit more variable as well, is towards the Ohio Valley, we have that below average chance of precip here. Not a lot of high confidence, but definitely something to keep note of here, especially over towards the Ohio River Valley. And that's going to be this area between Ohio, Indiana, and parts of Illinois, where we have a 50% chance of below average precip it's kind of leaning below right now so it's not like the values are going to be incredibly high or the probability of below average precipitation is incredibly high but there is a chance for it that's another thing to make note of it doesn't this also doesn't necessarily mean that every day is going to be no rain at all you're not getting any rain or you're going to have like 50 to 60 degree temperatures all month it could be a handful of days really but that being said Let's actually get a look at a little bit of the values here. And we'll start out with the temperature anomaly. So this is us looking at what the temperatures could be above average. Right now, with the, it's a very warm Christmas. One of the warmer Christmases that I can remember, actually. The entire country is above average right here, pretty much, except for a couple areas here in Florida and parts of uh, the coastal part of Louisiana here. So what we do as time goes on is we look one week later and look how things have quickly started to change. We have the uh, southeast looking pretty frigid at this point here, so we have to keep an eye on that. And keep in mind, this is at 6 p.m. on January 6th right here. So definitely something you need to be uh, keeping note of for sure. And then in that time frame, the air starts to, cold air starts to move, but that warm air is continually retreating to the north here. So it's really not until I would say the middle of the month where we start to see that warm air start to return. but just when you think it does we're starting to see it retreat once more starting to see a lot more cold air around the southeast it's probably uh giving a few of you a few question marks here and that having it's leaving a few of you with question marks here and then as we continue to go on we can continue to see that cold air starting to pour more and more into the eastern half of the u.s towards the end of the month and maybe even into february so like i said definitely something to keep an eye on here for sure Keep in mind also, we're trying to look through 30 days worth of time. So this can easily uh, flip. But for the most part here, if we were to look through the rest of this month and into the next month, we start out dry, 
But as time goes on here, and I find, like I said, I find the setup of this really interesting. And I can't call it a signal. It's a trend that I'll be on the lookout for towards mid-month where that colder air is trying to take over again. There's moisture there too. So something to make a mental note of for me and for you. So could we see something on along the lines of wintry precipitation from this? Too far out to tell. But this is like I said, it's an interesting signal. So here's another reason why I've been kind of harping on, you know, the uh, the whole thing with um, stratospheric heating and the um, and the temperatures and the potential of a big cool down here is that there's two oscillations that we often will look at during this time of year. Here's the first one here. This is called the um, North Atlantic Oscillation. I'll circle it for you. So this area right here. Whenever we have a uh, warm trend going on here, we can often end up seeing uh, more calm weather or warmer temperatures, I should say. And then also there's the uh, AO, which is the Arctic Oscillation, which is all the way up here. Forgive me for drawing these bad circles. But fact in the matter is these two oscillations play a key role in a lot of the uh, weather that we end up encountering throughout the course of the winter in particular also in other seasons but considering we're in winter right now of course that's what i'm going to be talking about that being said here as we continue to go forward here we had some stratospheric heating going on at a point and look what ends up happening here as time goes on look at this joker right here that's coming in so we have this big shot of cold air that's going to be coming in right after Christmas. And then this is where things kind of get interesting. That warm air eventually starts to wither away. And as time goes on, there's some bigger cold blasts that are set to take over. And while these aren't incredible looking at the moment, as we continue to go through this run, we start to see more and more of these becoming more prevalent, which is indic indicative of a uh, active weather pattern where potential for winter weather and severe weather comes into play here so the two words that might try might scare people a little bit even though i'm not trying to scare you polar vortex comes to mind here this is actually a pretty good example of a polar vortex coming into play how strong it is like i said still to be determined but definitely seeing a lot of signals there so here's a look at a different model. So the CFS is one I don't really look at too often unless I'm doing outlooks just like this. We were looking at the GFS ensemble in that last one. But fact of the matter is, I'm seeing a pretty similar trend between the two. In fact, this storm system looks really impressive at this point, and I'm kind of leery as to what this could do. Of course, like I said, 300 hours out, not a lot of, not a lot of uh, merit I can put into it yet, but. The fact that we are seeing a signal and a little bit of congruency here based off the outlook leads me to have a little bit of confidence, not a lot. The fact in the matter is, like just like we did with the ensemble, seeing this operational run, it does lead me to think that the uh, first half of the month could get uh, pretty wild here, possibly. Like I said, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but it's definitely something that you might want to make a mental note of for sure. It's definitely something that I'll be doing. And after the holidays, we'll be definitely monitoring very closely what lies ahead here. Because I've already been talking about the New Year's storm, and we'll probably talk about it again either on Christmas Day or probably the day after. But that's all I got for you guys on this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoy your holiday. I'm going to do the same with my family as well. Until then, again, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new, hit that share button if you found this video useful, if you think someone else will too. But again, enjoy the holidays, spread the love, horns up, it's Tired Metalhead Weatherman, I'll see you later.